All right, once again, here in Ontario, we are just days away once again from another education worker strike as talks appear to have hit an impasse between the union and the province. So here to give us an update on where things stand on the government side of things is Ontario's education minister, Stephen Lecce. Uh, minister Lecce, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you. Uh, first off, uh, we heard from the union yesterday saying that there has been a middle ground reached when it comes to wages. So this is not a wage issue. It's more of a student services issue, a staffing issue, a resourcing issue. You actually said yesterday in t on Twitter that uh, the province has offered to invest more in student services than any other government has in the past. Can you tell me some more details on what you have offered? Sure. Well, first off, um, I think it is uh, really disappointing that we're in this position because, as you know, the union said, look, withdraw Bill 28, the legislation we uh, brought in last week, with the condition that we won't strike. And then two days after we withdrew the bill in its entirety, they're on a strike. And I think a lot of parents are confused by this. I think they're also confused by the suggestion that this is about student services, not language you or I or anyone has discussed for like the last three months of negotiating. It's been entirely about wages and we shouldn't pretend otherwise. I mean, we were with the mediator two days ago and the only fundamental issue, the fault line was wages, the demand for more, which is why uh, the premier and I brought forth, I think, a very reasonable proposal. We stepped up in a big way, followed through on our commitment by adding $335 million more million in pay for just QP members alone over four years. We're also going to maintaining, as per their ask, the best pay and benefits in sick leave in Canada. They asked for a flat rate. They said, look, we don't want to differentiate the salaries for the lower and the higher income. We want one flat rate. While we thought it was prudent to give more to the lowest income, we accepted their advice, brought forth a flat rate. We have literally moved and acted on every ask of the government. And here we are today, you know, with the never-ending yardsticks being moved, impeding the ability of us just to get a deal that is materially good for their workers, but frankly, great for kids, provides them some stability. And to the question on staffing, we have hired, to, to answer it, we have increased funding to the highest levels of any government in the history of Ontario. Factually, we're spending $3 billion more in public education than Premier Wynne did at the peak of spending under the Liberals in 2017-18. We have roughly 7,000 more education workers hired in Ontario supporting our kids under our government since 2018. And we're going to hire 1,800 more every year for the course of the contract through a support for students fund. We believe in publicly funded schools. We also believe in children's rights to be in school. And I just believe that the union really needs to put the interests of kids first. They've been able to achieve so much. Let's work together to keep the kids in school. I think nothing, nothing should create okay. a barrier to the child's rights to, to learn. Now, Minister, I just want to interrupt you there. Um, you did talk about the 1,800 workers that you have vowed to hire each year. Laura Walton, though, from QP says that that wasn't something that was put on the table. This is the first time that she's heard of it, at least in a tweet from last night. So is this something that you plan on putting on the table or has this already been proposed during negotiations? We've always proposed um, to instate the support for students fund, which helps to hire uh, around 1,800 education workers and roughly 800 teachers over the course of the contract. Otherwise, those staff members would lapse. We're committing to maintain the funding and to hire those workers to add more capacity in our schools, keeping in mind we've hired 7,000 to date since 2018. We've increased the staffing and the funding overall. There's about $650 million more million this school year, for example, than so last year. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. So for uh, Laura Walton to say that she wasn't aware of this, is this, uh, uh, what do you think of that? Look, I, I think it is perplexing uh, that the discussion was about salaries uh, until uh, to come up with a rationale for, an ex for a strike. It's now about something else. I think most people watching knew what was the fault line. Uh, they started two weeks ago with their demand for 11.7% every year for three years, 33% in salary alone nearly 50% in compensation overall. We obviously uh, recognize that, that that was why they striked two Sundays ago by their own admission. Um, we believe fundamentally that our workers do important work in our schools and we're going to pay them much more, especially the lowest paid. We're going to hire more of them. Okay. We're going to maintain their benefits. Right. We need to do their part and stay at the table, not walk out on kids and put their welfare, their interests 
their mental and physical health first. Okay, Minister, I know that you have limited time, so I do want to ask you, one of the uh, demands that QP has made is that there is an early childhood education worker in every single kindergarten classroom, that there are additional education assistants as well. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you think there should be an ECE put in every single kindergarten classroom? That's not the case right now. And according to QP, it sounds like uh, that is not something that is on the table. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, you know, we are very proud in our school system to have a um, full day kindergarten, one of the few provinces in Canada to have uh, provided that. We're maintaining that. We're going to defend those uh, uh, the rights of children to be in school, and then really for these young, our youngest learners to be in school. Uh, since 2002, we've actually hired 10,000 uh, designated early childhood educators. We've hired 19,000 other education workers. We've hired over 400 principals. We've done a massive level of staffing increases within our schools. Um, and our commitment is to hire even more workers, to your point, recognizing the needs within our uh, schools. But, you know, hiring more workers, creating the largest tutoring program in Canada, increasing mental health supports by 420 percent, it actually doesn't really matter unless the kids are in school in the first place. Right. But are, are you committing to having an ECE in every single kindergarten classroom? We are committing to increasing staffing within our schools, as we have done every year over 7,000 more staff, just education workers, the QP workers within our schools as a consequence of our government's continuous investment in increasing the funding in our schools. We know there's a lot of work to do to help these kids catch up. We've seen the data in EQAO. It's why we insist they stay in a stable classroom with their educators and their friends. And it's why we're going to continue to make more investments uh, to improve the lives of children. But we also believe the principle of the plan to catch up was designed around a basic uh, acknowledgement that kids have to be in school. They've got to be in a stable environment in front of the teachers. And that's what we're insisting upon. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, for time purposes. Uh, but thank you for so much for joining us, Minister Lecce. We do appreciate it. Thank you.